Don't do this at home, children. <laughs> well, I was at Creedy Pond last week and uh, ended up smashing my end eye. My good friend Alan here, who built my rods for me. I put a link to his website in the description. Um, is uh, putting me on a new end eye. So uh, he's just heating it up at the moment to get the glue to unstick. And now he's taking the end eye off. Sort of. What a blowtorch out. <laughs> no, that will melt the carbon. <laughs> We've had one of those experiences here. Um, Have you? Last year. Oh no. Uh, but it was on it was on a butt of a fly rod. Oh that's not too bad. And it was um, we I managed to create an insert and it was under the handle as well. Just I can smell the glue. So it must be on its way. There oh there he goes, off he goes. Pull it down immediately. The beautiful owl. So why are you cooling down the tip then, Al? Well, so it just doesn't oh, get in it, you know, get rid of the heat as soon as I can. Oh, okay. No, scrape it clean. And check that there's no splits or anything in what's left, and that's still perfectly intact. Yeah, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. I suppose you're giving it a bit of an edge for the glue to stick to them when you put the new eye well, on as well. Well, it, what is left there is is solid material. There's nothing that's going to creep off. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. That's, that's oh, the one that you put that. on on my other rod when my other rod was the same eye as last time. I've got matching eyes again now. No, oh, there you are. Same Funnily enough, enough two, pe well. two people. <laughs> what? Your eyes are matching my too. Eyes are matching. I've got a left and a right. All right. Well, they can't be matching then. You need two left ones, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Funnily enough, three people, two or three people so far, have pointed out that my end tips are different colours. Mm. One's silver and one's black. <laughs> Are you going to be bothered? There's a tiny gap there between there and the thread. Ah, oh, huge! No, I won't be no. bothered, mate. I could, I could cut that amount off so that it would fit flush. Well, it's either raw. Which I, one do you think? I'd just sooner leave it as it is. Yeah. Because so it doesn't affect. That doesn't it. do it. It's, it's only cosmetic. Okay. Well, that's what we'll do then. I think. Because it's awkward to cut. Because normally I'd work with the rod section to my left. To your Since left. I've been rehoused, you're now working with the rod section I'm to your right. The other way round to what I would normally use. So, what's that? Is that some sort of like epoxy that is resin? The you put it in your pocket because you forget it. Oh yeah. Um, it's get professional, it from smoking. professional rod builders glue. Yeah. And by using oh. that. It makes me a professional rod builder. All oh, right. So you'd be an amateur if you weren't using that then. The good thing about that is that that ring is a perfect fit. What on the blank? You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Which and you don't it's often get them that good. Good quality ring as well. It's a Fuji one. That's isn't a it? Fuji Alkanite as well. <laughs> yeah, Alan built me these rods probably about what four years ago, five years ago. 
Yeah, there might be a date on the butt, actually, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, there isn't. No? <laughs> yeah, it was about five, four or five years ago. I mean, we've been here. At least. We've been here nearly six years here. Yeah, well, you built them while you were here, so. Oh, well, four or five then, shall we say. Yeah, they've been perfect. They've been really, really, really nice rods. Yeah. A pleasure to play fish on because they go straight through, yeah. straight through, nice and nice and soft. People forget that when they buy rods these days, they just want a rod that will cast from here to Christmas. Exactly. And the finer points of fishing are completely lost. Exactly it's right. The same with fly rods as well. And the other thing is as well, was around here you don't really need to make many chucks over about 80 or 90 yards, so you don't really exactly. need anything that's going to be super stiff. Well, we don't have gravel pits. Gravel pits are where you need the distance ability. Well, this is it. This is the old reservoir, isn't there? But yeah. So now you're just applying that to the just the tip, are you? And yeah. then when you push it down, it'll push yeah, it down there. There's a little bit of jiggling about because what I do, what, so when that you when, when you push the tip on, yeah, the excess comes out, and then I poke the excess like that into the ring. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, so it gets. So you're getting that maximum that happens, glue and then gluage. We'll put some more. I see. Yep. Yeah. Like that. And because it's such a tight fit, the ring. Once that ring is in line, well, I'll line it up. Yeah. In a minute, when I've wiped off the excess. Mm-hmm. And so how do you make sure they're perfectly aligned? Do you just do it by eye? Yep. You get your eyes by eye? Yeah. Are you looking down through the eye then to yeah. like see if it... Are your age is that wise? <laughs> hey, what? Sorry? You said wrong on my eye, so... <laughs> I'll double check it that way as well. Yeah. Along the top. Gosh, they're all in line. That's amazing. Well, of course they're all in line. You made the rod. Well, actually, yeah, it's a wonder, isn't it? It's amazing. There you are. Job done. Oh, you are a lifesaver, Alan. Thank you. Thank you very much for assisting me. Because uh, I was crying on Sunday when I did that. I bet you were. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop recording now. So, okay. thank you very much for uh, showing us how you put an end tip eye on, do a tip eye repair on a rod. Natural strip quill feathers. Yeah, you're just wrapping like a material around it, and then you just re put resin over the top, do you? Yeah, the full coats of nail varnish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's something that carp might like. Yeah. Eat as well, actually. It's a shame. Do they float? No, they sink like a brick. Oh well, that's a shame. If they had a little bit of foam because around the edge they, just well, to make them float. They they live in the silt and the mud. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's bloodworm basically by another name. Ah, okay. It's what bloodworm turn into before they turn into a fly. So a buzzer is another word for a bloodworm then. Yeah, well, it's another stage of a a buzzer becomes. Sorry, a bloodworm becomes a buzzer. Oh right, okay. A buzzer's, a buzzer's like an adult bloodworm, is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, to give it a correct Latin name, the Chironomids. Ah. <laughs> a sh Chironomid? Yeah. Ah. So. And that's one of the few things I do know the Latin names of. <laughs> yeah. I know the Latin name of Julius Caesar. <laughs> well, that's very, very, Julius impressive, very, very <laughs> impressive. I suspect it's much the same. Alan does a lot of rod building here, and he also ties a lot of flies. He ties more flies than he does build rods at the moment. Yeah, there's a selection of his fly rods there. They're all built around Harrison Blanks. And there's two of them. Aren't and it's worth saying we're at the uh, we're at the country sports shop here in Newton Abbott, where they've got a large selection of rifles and shotguns and luggage and reloading equipment, things like that. So. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to call this a wrap now.